Coming up on Take 30 News, we tell you about a program leaving a positive impact on special needs students at the TK Martin Center. And campus organizations showcase their talents in hopes of building a better future. And students go to some stress relief with the end of the semester closing in. Your Take 30 News starts right now. Welcome to Take 30 News. I'm Mariah Norman. And I'm Cody Blazak. Learning how to recognize toxic traits in a relationship can be a lifesaver for many people. The Healthy Dogs Peer Educators hosted an event dedicated to discussing the methods of navigating relationships. This included topics of domestic violence, red and green flags, and communication skills. Members of Healthy Dogs, Virgie Jackson tells us what considers a bad sign of a relationship. I would say two red flags for sure in a relationship is a lack of communication and manipulation. Each person who attended the event received a $10 meal voucher. For more information, you can visit healthpromotion.msstate.edu. Many communities are coming together to discuss how they can do more to protect their youth. Take 30's Jackson Reynolds has the details on one of these events. April is Child Abuse Prevention Month, and the Octavaha County School District is trying to raise awareness. In honor of this month, a community engagement event is set to take place with a focus on preventing cyber crimes against children. But this presentation with child abuse and trafficking and drug abuse for kids is just not a laughing matter. The event features keynote speakers such as Mississippi resident Brian Montgomery, who will be sharing his son's experience with cybercrime and how it cost him his life. He wants the community, um, the nation, the state, to know what happened to his son so that it doesn't have to happen to your children, to your son, to your daughter. The event aims to provide parents and other community members with tips on how to regulate children's internet activity as well as how to identify signs of online grooming and exploitation. The internet has brought the world into our bedroom, into our homes. So it's no longer that we can say things happen in other areas. Right here in Starksville and the surrounding area, we have these type crimes being committed. According to recent studies, cyber crimes against children have increased dramatically within the past few years, making events like this that raise awareness all the more important. This event is an important step towards ensuring the safety and well-being of our children in the digital age, and by working together as a community and educating each other on what we can do to help, we can ensure a safer environment for our youth. Our slogan, if you see something, say something. So we need to talk to our children about these things that are happening right here in our community. For more details on the event and how you can participate, visit StarkvilleSD.com. For Take 30 News, I'm Jackson Runnels. It's great to see communities come together to make a change. And parents, do your best to keep your children informed and safe. And now our reporter Rashid Tatham is on a very special preschool program that will help bridge the gap for special needs children. Thanks, sir. With nearly two decades of experience, the Project IMPACT provides a unique special needs education experience. Project Impact is a school um, for children with disabilities, and we have we service children um, with a, a broad range of disabilities. Some children have autism, some have specific um, genetic disorders. The Project Impact Preschool Program provides special education and early development that's 100% free. Project Impact is committed to providing quality services to meet each student's individual needs. If a child comes to us before the age of three, they have an IFSP, which is an individual family service plan. Um, and then if they, it, once they're with us from three to five, they have an IEP, which is their individualized education plan, so that we set goals for them to accomplish over the whole school years. And for Hannah, her goals is simple. Our goal is to get them ready for school. Rashid Tatham, Tape 30 News.
For information on Project Impact or if you are interested in your child to be admitted, please call 662-325-1028. We turn things over to Victoria Alvarado for our first look at weather. Well, thank you guys and happy Maroon Friday. Right now, we're taking a step back to look at temperatures across the southeast. And it is rather warm and humid in this April Friday afternoon. And that's because of the rain that made its way across the south overnight and early this morning. Temperatures right now are in the mid to upper 70s across the southeast and even in the 80s in Arkansas. Now focusing back in on northeast Mississippi, temperatures tonight are going to drop into the upper 50s, breaking for a rather cool night. Tomorrow, temperatures are going to climb into the 80s, and that's thanks to the humidity, so it'll be rather warm tomorrow. Back to you guys at the desk. After the last few weeks of rain, the campus is back hosting outdoor events, one of those involving farm animals. More on that story after the break. What if you could be part of one of the top engineering schools in the nation without ever leaving the coast? Well, now you can. Mississippi State's collaboration with Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College allows you to earn core credits while pursuing a four-year degree in mechanical or electrical engineering, all in the same location. And with classes taught by MSU professors, the world-renowned education you couldn't find anywhere else is now in your own backyard. To learn more about this great opportunity, visit us online. Creating an impact in society is the message here on MSU's campus for Research Week. Faculty, staff, and students spent the week showcasing the advancements and impacts they've brought to their fields. Our Jackson Runnels caught all the action and has the details. ...and creativity were at the forefront of Mississippi State as students and faculty gathered for Research Week. Outside of the Student Union, participants showcase the different projects they have been working on for the past semester, the goal of the projects being to help build a better future for humanity. Yeah, so at MSU, uh, you know, we're doing about 300 million in research annually, and you know, beyond the number, what that means is trying to create an impact in society, whether that's at the local level, at the national level, at the international level. From plastic alternatives to robotic watchdogs, the projects on display were truly awe-inspiring. One project that stood out was the EcoCar team, who were participating in a national competition where teams are tasked with turning a standard gas-operated vehicle into a next-generation electric car. The Mississippi State team plans on adding a self-driving feature to their car in the future. Um, we'll also be adding our own autonomy features, so we'll be adding on a LIDAR, some com a couple of cameras and doing our own sensor fusion to basically let the vehicle do adaptive cruise control, so full range adaptive cruise control where it can follow cars in traffic. However, the event was not just about showcasing new inventions. Organizers wanted the event to prepare students for the workforce and provide them with valuable experience that they normally wouldn't be able to find in the classroom. So the main goal of, of the project for us is that we want to train as many students as possible, get them all of the experience they could possibly get out of EcoCar, get them to build out their network and get really unique job, job offers and career opportunities. Overall, Research Week was a glimpse into the future of science and technology and is a testament to the young researchers who drive progress and shape the world we live in. For Take 30 News, I'm Jackson Runnels. Research Week was designed to foster knowledge of the different scholarly, collaborative, and creative activities happening on campus and promote awareness of the many resources that support research at MSU. For more information, please visit research.msu.msstate.edu. Finals are approaching and students need a way to decompress. One organization put on an event earlier today to cater to those students in need. Students in need of a moment to de-stress found that opportunity earlier today. 
the MSU Vet Club brought goats from Jubilee Farm to campus and Vice President Courtney Story had more information as to why. We love using animals to raise awareness about all kinds of things and so the idea kind of came about because goat yoga was really popular at the time and people love baby goats and it's a spring event so we have a lot of baby goats in the spring. Story and other members of the club wanted to raise awareness specifically to mental health. Jubilee Farm camped out right outside of Ruby Hall, bringing goats with them. So right now they're doing feeding, but throughout the day they are doing yoga classes with the goats in order to spread awareness on mental health. Students stop by during the day feeding the animals and even doing yoga with them. And some saw this as an opportunity to relax before the end of the semester approaches with finals. It makes me so much happier. It's so cool going to see it, like just them out in the field and being able to go pet them and stuff. The event was met with plenty other students with similar excitement to go and spend time with the goats during their day on campus. For Take 30 News, I'm Mariah Norman. MSU Vet Club hosts many other events for the public and you can find out more info on the club's Cowbell Connect page. After the break, Victoria Alvarado gives us a full look into our weather for the weekend. Performance at the highest level is the objective of every athlete. But what can athletes accomplish if they understood and responded to everything their bodies are telling them? Mississippi State University's Athlete Engineering Program is designing and deploying groundbreaking advanced wearable technology that creatively collects millions of data points for researchers to analyze, predict performance, and improve body mechanics. Researchers in engineering, kinesiology, sociology, textiles, and more disciplines are working together to test and design new technology that leads to winning results. In addition to helping athletes reach their highest potential, this collaborative program is reducing injuries and protecting the health of competitors now and far into the future. Mississippi State University. Farming can be a tough way to make a living. Weather, pricing pressures, and unpredictable swings in demand can take a toll, not only on farmers' finances, but on their mental health, as well as that of family members and farm workers. That's why Mississippi State University is spearheading a program to train extension agents to detect the signs of depression, substance abuse, and other stress-related challenges. Everyone has a bad day, of course, but this holistic view of a farmer's circumstances enables MSU representatives to recognize the difference between routine struggles and deeper, more serious issues. It may be a tough conversation, but the sooner it gets started, the sooner farmers can get help to better manage stress and continue the important work of growing the products our world needs. Caring for farms and farmers. Mississippi State University. Well, welcome back everybody and happy Maroon Friday. I'm Campus Connect meteorologist Tori Alvarado and right now I am looking out with you with our eyes in the sky through our junction cam. There are plenty of clouds moving through northeast Mississippi and it is a rather warm afternoon as temperatures are currently sitting at 76 degrees. Excuse me. Now this weekend is a super busy weekend in Starkville thanks to Super Bulldog weekend. Our first game at Duty Noble is at 6 p.m. versus Old Miss. Clouds will still hang around throughout the game but will be more widespread as temperatures stick around in the 70s. Now the next baseball game is at 3 p.m. on Saturday following the maroon and white spring game at 12 at Davis Wade. Temperature will be rising into the 80 degrees mark, but thankfully those clouds can help keep the fans cool as they're sitting in the dude. Now Sunday's game will be at 1 p.m. and it will be significantly cooler thanks to some overnight rain moving through Starkville. Temperatures will be reaching into the upper 60s, but it'll be mainly sunny skies so we can enjoy that last game of the series. Now speaking of that rain that is moving through our area, Saturday by 12 p.m., some rain isolated showers, mind you, will be moving over Tupelo and further north of northeast Mississippi, but it'll move through rather quickly. Now, Sunday at 1 a.m. is when those showers will really start to move in to northeast Mississippi and be rather heavy as well. But thankfully, just as fast as they move in, they move on out. Sunday by 8 a.m., we do have some lingering clouds, but thankfully, we'll be drying out and we'll be able to enjoy our Sunday. 
Now, moving into our next seven, seven days, excuse me, we can enjoy sunshine for almost the whole week as temperatures fluctuate between the mid 70s to the 80s. And we do have some cooler overnight temperatures as well, but we do have the chance to enjoy plenty of sunshine before rain moves back into the picture on Friday. Thanks, Victoria, for our weather. After the break, we will take a look into some things happening for during our anticipated Super Bulldog weekend. We take seriously at Mississippi State University. Today, our outstanding faculty are on the job with a passion that places them among the best in the business. We're launching new classroom models, investing in world-changing research, and providing a college experience that's second to none. Though things may look different, our sights have never been higher. To be or not to be, that is the question that echoes the walls of the theater department at Mississippi State University. Nurturing the voice and movement of a new generation of dynamic storytellers. An inclusive program welcoming all to a broad course of study in directing, stagecraft, playwriting, and acting. Discover your passion in performance and production with MSU Theater. Print, it opens the doors to the world of communication. It's where a student can be anything. It teaches teamwork, diligence, loyalty, and responsibility. At Mississippi State, we are dedicated to further the field of journalism. We make sure to tell the story no matter how challenging. We incorporate all aspects to help you grow as a student and as a person. So, what are you waiting for? Good afternoon and welcome back to this week's edition of Take 30 Sports. I'm Phoebe Florian. Super Bulldog Weekend is finally here and things are already underway. The weekend started with the unveiling of the Ron Polk statue at the Dude. Ron Polk is a legend for Mississippi State, where he spent nearly three decades as MSU's baseball coach. He's won 1,373 career games, has six different Hall of Fame inductions, and led six different MSU teams to the College World Series. Super Bulldog Weekend will continue on Saturday with the Maroon and White Spring football game. During halftime, the passing of the harness from Jack to Dak will occur. Jack has served as a live mascot, mascot bully for State for eight years and it is now his time to retire. We are sad to see our furry friend go, but we are just as excited to welcome another who will be just as boundless as the last. Thank you, Jack, and we wish you all the happiness in your retirement. The schedule for Super Bulldog Weekend consists of tennis, softball, and baseball tonight, Saturday will showcase football, softball, baseball, and volleyball. Following baseball's game on Saturday, there will be a concert in the Dude featuring Brett Eldridge. And finally, on Sunday, women's tennis, softball, and baseball all play. The Bulldogs softball team announced when the All for Alex weekend will take place. On April 22nd, the SEC softball community will unite as one in honor of Alex Wilcox. All 13 schools will join together to wear teal or teal accents to recognize the impact Alex has on the fight against ovarian cancer and the softball community nationwide. This is not just limited to the SEC though. It has become widespread among other colleges and universities and even high schools. In national sports news, earlier today, the New York Rangers surprised a Sandy Hook survivor with a law school scholarship. Take a look. Story. Yeah. I feel for you. You're an amazing human. Thank you. Thank what do you want to do? You know? I want to be on the Yeah? This is for you. From the Garden of Dreams. Yes. This is a scholarship for law school. Oh, no so way. you're going to graduate from college, you're going to go to law school, and you got no debt coming out of school. Thank you so much. You deserve it, man. Thank you so much. Congrats. Now, I think that is such an amazing and heartwarming story. Most definitely. Great, Great things. things. <laughs> are Sorry. happening in professional <laughs> sports. Yes, also in the MLB, there were two records that have been tied. There, for the first time in 111 years, a rookie age 20 or under has scored or hit, excuse me, gotten a base hit in 12 consecutive games. And the Tampa Bay Rays started the season 13 and 0 for the first time anyone ever, not ever, since 1987. 
That's incredible. I wonder if the Rays will be able to beat that record and get to 14 and 0. Before we move on from sports, I have to ask you guys, it is a busy weekend. What are you looking forward to for Super Bowl Dog weekend? Uh, I got to say I'm most looking forward to seeing Jack and Dak. Oh, okay. I love Bully and I love seeing I just love animals and mm -hmm. so being able to see both of them together is I think it's amazing. Mm -hmm. May not be sports related. The concert seems pretty nice. The country <laughs> music and Starkville seems like a good time. Yes. All right. After the break, leaders in Lowndes County push for drug safety within the community. As concern grows over the declining health of the world's oceans, veterinary students at Mississippi State are learning how to rescue and rehabilitate vulnerable marine animals. Through a unique partnership between the College of Veterinary Medicine and the Institute of Marine Mammal Studies in Gulfport, Mississippi, students are experiencing the chance of a lifetime. Real-time research of this fragile ecosystem prepares students for a future in providing care for sick and stranded dolphins, turtles, sea lions, and other marine species. At the same time, MSU's advanced diagnostic technology is helping innovate for solutions while improving treatment and outcomes. Not only are the waters of the Gulf Coast opening new worlds of discovery for Mississippi State veterinary students, they are much safer now thanks to this game-changing partnership that's improving life for literally hundreds of aquatic animals. Now, a drug that has been regularly sold over the counter is now being banned in Lowndes County. Yesterday, the dr I'm so sorry. Yesterday, the drug Tianpentine was banned from Lowndes County. Zaza is over-the-counter drug used in an antidepressant and anti-anxiety pill. Zaza unfortunately has opioid-like features. Reptine generically known as Zaza was banned from Lowndes County. Zaza is an over-the-counter drug used as an antidepressant and anti-anxiety pill. Zaza unfortunately has opioid-like features and can become addictive as well as cause withdrawals. This has been a major concern about the drug because of the popularity of Zaza growing, which has led to its ban. So uh, TNFP was being sold in convenience stores in uh, stores here in Lyons County, and anybody can walk in, a 14-year-old kid could walk into the store and then get addicted to it. Uh, we started seeing a lot of overdoses and a lot of overdose deaths related to just that drug. And being that there's no medical use for it, why is anybody selling it other than selling it for profit? Stores that sell Zaza were expected to clear their inventory of the drug yesterday as it was banned for purchase and possession. Overdoses and no age restriction has been a concern in Lowndes County because it is advertised as a dietary supplement as well as an antidepressant in other countries. The best thing that ever happened in my opinion is them gone. Gone. They need to be away from here. And I've got several other opinions on that other than just my experience with them. That's a wrecking ball. That's a wrecking ball. For sure. The result of selling or possessing Zaza will be a misdemeanor with a $1,000 fine and or up to six months in jail. For Take 30 News, I'm Cody Blazak. A statewide ban for the drug Zaza will be put into place on July 1st. A low-ranking Air National Guardsman accused of leaking some of the nation's most closely guarded secrets online. 21-year-old Jack Texiero was arrested by the FBI at his parents' home in Massachusetts Thursday. CNN's Jason Carroll has more. The suspect in the leak of classified intelligence documents now in custody. The Justice Department arrested Jack Douglas Teixeira. Aerial footage shows a heavily armed tactical team swarming his home 21-year-old Massachusetts Air National Guardsman slowly backing up and being handcuffed by a heavily armed tactical team. A fast-moving investigation found Jack to Sarah was the leader of an internet chat group on the social media site Discord where information about gaming, guns, and racist memes were shared in the chat room. The same chat room where federal authorities allege he posted classified materials to a group of young men. The Washington Post reports one of its members was a teen who says he became aware of the documents up to eight months ago. The documents were often listed as Ukraine versus Russia at first. 
However, it slowly spiraled into just intelligence about everything. The teen says Teixeira was charismatic, sharing a love of guns and military gear. He did see himself as the leader of this group, and he wanted us all to be sort of super soldiers to some degree, informed, fit, with God, well-armed, stuff like that. We spoke with one former student who knew Teixeira from high school and middle school and says he had a fascination with war, the military, and guns. A lot of people were worried of him, especially since he was really into the whole guns thing um, and spoke about it quite often. And I know it was kind of off-putting to some people. Air Force records show Teixeira was enlisted as an airman first class, joining in 2019, working at a military base in Massachusetts. His official title, Cyber Transport Systems Journeyman, a job the Air Force says would include making sure the communications network is operating properly. But it's not clear what level of access he had. He may not have been the actual designated recipient of any of these pieces of intelligence. He may have pulled them out of the burn bags or taken them off people's desks. Shara is set to have his first court appearance at the federal courthouse in Boston on Friday. Pageants can be a very important moment in the lives of the youth. It can all begin at a prelim. Jonathan Washington is in the studio with us and has more. That's exactly right, Mariah. All signs are pointing to the grand finale, the Mississippi Magnolia State Pageant. With this opportunity on the horizon, con contestants are preparing themselves to put the best foot forward. In West Point, Magnolia State Pageant begins this Saturday, April 15th. After an extended deadline to allow more potential competitors to register for the event, Wendy McMullen is excited about hosting her first prelim event. It's, it's been interesting. It's been fun. It's been, um, I'm excited. Most of all, I think it's, it's, it's the excitement. The pageant is set to take place at the Amazing Grace Activity Center on Highway 45 in West Point, Mississippi. The cost to register for the pageant was $65, and in return, over 30 titles would be given out, along with overall most beautiful, overall most photogenic, and overall best fashion. Each uh, group will have, um, the award is like prettiest eyes, prettiest smile, um, best fashion, and then of course there will be an overall, uh, oh, and most photogenic, but then there will be an overall most photogenic, and mo you know, so they'll have like an overall of everybody. Anyone is welcome to attend the pageant. The winner of the pageant will also receive $1,000 cash and will head to Vicksburg in September for the Little Miss Magnolia State Pageant. Back to Cody and Mariah at the desk. You can go to its Facebook page, Clay County West Point Magnolia State Prelims. Well, guys, that's all we have for Take 30 News. We'll see you guys next week in Hell State.